Do you fear coming in net and you feel like your technique's not right? You feel like you don't know how to move the correct way at net and you don't know what to do when you're up there? Well, this is the series you need to watch because in this series of three videos, I'm gonna show you how to improve your technique, improve your movement, and know what to do at the net. So after this, you're gonna feel so much more confident at the net. So let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the most important technique you need to have the best volleys on the court. And it comes down to three things. The first thing is what I call the grip and the hold. The second thing is what I call the turn. And the final thing is the racket face. Now let's get going. Why is this so important? Because if you want to become a better player and get to the next level, it's generally going to come down to somehow finishing the point, regardless of your game style. If you like hanging out the baseline, you can do that all day long, but there's going to come a time when you need to come in to finish the point. Maybe you're the type of player that is aggressive from the baseline. Well, even more so because you're going to hurt your opponent. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to give you short balls. We're going to have to finish it. I suffer from this so much where I be aggressive, do the right thing and what I would get? A short ball. Then i go up to net and flag the volley, and it made me petrified of coming towards the net. It took me so long to get confident about what I need to do up there and how I need to move to be successful, and I don't want that for you. So let's talk about the grip in the hole. The grip you want to have is the continental grip. But before we talk about that, let's think about why so many people volley like this. They have the frying pan, which makes perfect sense because really the racket strings are looking where you want to hit the ball. And it works, but it's not the most efficient way of volleying, especially if you get a ball that's not right here. If you get a ball that's low, you're gonna probably pop it up. And if you get a ball that's high, and <laughs> if you get a ball on your back inside, what are you gonna do? And this is the reason why having the correct grip is so important. The correct grip you wanna have is the continental grip. An easy way of finding that is holding your racket vertical and grabbing it like a hammer, like you're doing this way. If you're holding on the side, this is not like a hammer. So make sure you're holding it and you can hammer up and down. And the reason this is important is because the right grip gives you stability on both sides for your forehand and backhand volley without having to change grips. And what I mean by this is if you hold your hand out, you have these kind of two pressure points, one right here, this pad and one on your thumb. You can really push against this. Now, when you have a continental grip, notice how if I turn this way, my pad is slightly behind the racket. So meaning as I push against or the uh, strings push against the racket, I can feel that and resist that. Same thing on the backhand side, my thumb is behind the strings. And so as the ball comes into contact with the strings, I can resist the ball. And that's what makes this grip so important. The next part is the hold. I see a lot of players holding the racket like this, getting ready for volleys. It's not necessarily a bad thing or a wrong thing, but I think there's a more efficient way of doing it. And I mean by holding not only your racket slightly off to the side, but making sure that your elbows aren't tucked in here and here. The reason being is that if your elbows are tucked in here, just like this, and I turn, look how close everything is to me. I'm very jammed up. But if I pull it away from my body and I'm on the side here, look how everything's nice and spaced out. The whole reason why I want to have my racket slightly tilted is this. If the ball comes from here over, it should be a backhand volley. So I'm already prepared. And from here over, this should be a forehand volley. And now that you know this, you can really manage when the ball comes to you feeling comfortable in your grip. The next part is the turn. And it's really, really simple. I think so many players get caught up in taking the rack back with their arms and doing so much. They're constantly swinging. And this is what makes the volley so much more complicated, especially when the ball's coming fast. So the turn is really simple. It really starts with understanding having a great ready position. If I start with my racket out here and I pretend instead of I'm hitting the ball this way and I go this way, this is the direction I'm going to hit the ball. All I need to do is get my racket set and turn my head. And if the ball was coming, this would be the perfect position for a forehand volley. And if I'm pretending I'm hitting a backhand volley this way, what would I do? The exact same thing here. This would be a perfect position for my backhand volley. So how do I get in that position? Really simply, if I split and just turn, I'm in that position. It's really just a ready position facing this way. So if I split and turn, I'm prepared for my forehand volley. And if I split and turn, I'm prepared for my backhand volley. So it's really important to understand the turn is really simple. And by making it where it's just a turn, you become much quicker. Instead of doing this to get to volleys, I just go here and here. It makes me so much more proactive towards getting in position to hit a volley, regardless if it's coming fast or slow. And that's why the turn is so important. The last phase is the racket face. And this is probably the most understated thing in tennis is the racket face. And I'm going to tell you this because, and I'm going to say it over and over again, because it's so, so important. If you take nothing else away from the technical portion of this video and focus on the racket face, your volleys will improve. So what is the racket face? Basically, wherever the racket face is looking at contact, that's where the ball's going to go. I'm going to say it one more time. 
wherever the racket face is looking, that's where the ball's gonna go. So, so many times a player miss a shot, a volley, and I say, well, what happened? And they'll look at me and go, well, I wasn't turned enough, or um, my, I wasn't moving this, or they, they always go somewhere other than the racket face. And I kind of ask them, like, well, did, did your hip, did, wasn't turned hit the ball, or did your racket face hit the ball? I'm like, but my hip, but it's like, but your racket face is more important because that's the only thing that has contact with the ball. Hence, that's the only thing that can control or change what happens to the ball. And everything we do in tennis is to optimize the racket face at contact. The whole shebang is about this. I don't want to get on a diatribe, but just know that. Everything we do in the game of tennis is to optimize what your racket face is doing at contact because that's the only thing that can control where the ball goes. Okay, so now that I got off my diatribe, it's really important to understand this. So, what this means is, if your racket face is open at contact, the ball's gonna go up. If your racket face is too close at contact, the ball's gonna go down. And this is so important that as you have lower balls, you're gonna have to open your racket face if it's below the net and soften up your hands if you want the drop shot or something. But as the ball gets higher, you don't have to have it as open because we don't need the ball to go as high. And this is why the racket face is so, so important. Now let's get to action steps to help you improve your volley. So the very first thing you wanna do as an action step is just getting good at the turn. If you got the grip and you got the hole, it really comes down to the turn. And the way we do this, again, is just focusing on one, understanding the mechanics of the turn. So what I wanna do is have you start in this great ready position we talked about, making sure their arms aren't tucked in and they're out here. Once we have the arms in place, all I want you to do is really get into a ready position facing in this direction. So this would be my forehand volley if I'm a right-handed player. So if I get in a ready position here and just focus on opening up the racket face and turning, you can see how the racket's away from me here. This is the image you wanna have when you're hitting a volley. This is that kind of classic seeing the players hit the volley. You can have your hand here or here, totally fine, but it's really making sure that coming back to ready position, that I look here and boom. So just getting here and feeling that position. And then I wanna do the exact same thing on the backhand side. So again, getting into that ready position, opening up the racket face, looking forward, and again here. So you can really see how just having those images in your mind is super important. Now, how do we get there with our feet? How do we make sure that our feet's in the right position? So the way we wanna do this is really think of stepping and then all I want you to do is take a step forward. Now, this is one important thing that I want you to not get confused because oh, it drives me crazy and we'll talk about it in the second uh, part of the series is do not stomp. No killing bugs, we're a bug friendly place here. We don't like killing bugs. Well, I mean, unless they're trying to do something to us, but for the most part, don't stop. So this should be a light step. So just step, okay? And I just want you to practice just stepping, okay? And you'll see why this is important, just stepping. Now, if I take this and add my turn, look what happens here, boom. I'm just stepping and I'm ready. I'm just stepping, just like that. So make sure now that you have the idea, we're just gonna go through reps. Just practice split, and then step, split, and then step. And all I'm doing, split, and then step, is the exact same position that we were in here, opening that racket face a little bit. And what's really happening is as I'm stepping, I'm opening up. We're gonna do the exact same process on the backhand side, which is just split, and then step. Just a nice light step, split, and then step. From here, we'll add in our racket and do that same thing where we're doing our turn to split, and then step. And you can really see how this is really simple. You don't have to do a lot of backswings. So go through and do enough reps that you get this down. This is hugely important. Now I know we're not moving. That's what we're gonna talk about in the second part of the series. So make sure you get this down before you move to the second part of the series. Now finally, it's really understanding the racket face. And this isn't necessarily a drill you, you have to do, but I want you to understand the different dynamics of the height or openness of the racket face. Meaning that the more I'm below the net, the more my racket's gonna be open. And as I start coming up, you can see my racket face starting to close. And this is gonna be really, really important as you get better at hitting volleys. And so the drill you wanna do is either have a ball machine or you can have a, a, a partner feed you a ball and try to get them to feed you the same ball over and over again. What I mean by this is you're gonna hit a couple low balls, a couple normal balls, and a couple of uh, higher balls. And what I want you to do is take that low ball and open up the racket face, making the ball go up. And when it goes over the net, all we want is like two or three feet over the net. If we get a normal ball, then we're gonna close it a little bit, it'll still have the ball traveling up a little bit. And if we get a higher ball, you can close it if you want. But it really depends on where you wanna hit the ball. Your target should be halfway between the baseline and service line. That's a great target. So all you're gonna do is practice split step, boom. Take the low one, split step, normal. 
and then split step high. And those are the action steps to start working on your technique. Hopefully you understand that volleying is not complicated. It's actually a lot simpler than most people make it. The big key is making sure you keep it simple, especially if the ball's coming fast or you're in a situation where maybe you're lunging and you can't control necessarily your body as much. This is how you become a much better volleyer. So let's sum everything up. Number one, you have to have the right grip. I know this does work in this situation, and this situation, I see so many people going over here, but if you really wanna become a better player, a better volleyer, and not have your volley stop you, you gotta start learning how to use the continental grip and holding it the most efficient way. By doing this, you're gonna feel so much more solid when you hit a ball and not have it where the racket kind of jerks around or the dreaded like kill the ball like this. And you're just never gonna be consistent that way. So second, it is the turn. This is so important because it prepares you for the oncoming ball. And a lot of times we get so caught up in taking a big swing that we just don't understand that we just need to do a subtle turn. Sometimes also another quick tip on the turn, especially for the forehand side, the forehand may not require a huge turn all the way like the backhand might require a little bit more, but it really depends on the volley. But either way, you will be turning for the forehand or the backhand. It just depends on how much and where you wanna put the ball. Number three, this is the big one, is the racket face of contact. If you're dumping balls or volleys in the net, guess what? It's because your racket face is too close. If you're sailing them long, it's because they're too open. Yes, there could be some other things like you're swinging or you're trying to do too much with your volleys or you're targeting the wrong location, but all those things come back to what's the racket face doing at contact? If you understand that, you can make dramatic changes in your volleys. If you like this video, make sure you go to totaltennisdomination.org and become a subscriber. As a subscriber, you're gonna get weekly tennis tips and different things that we personally send you answering questions that our subscribers have to make sure you're getting the most out of your tennis game. So don't miss out. Go to totaltennisdomination.org and sign up to be a subscriber. So I'll see you next time for the next series where we talk about how to move better on the court. This is really crucial. If you start combining these all together, you're going to feel more and more comfortable moving forward, closing points off at the net because it is important if you want to become a better player.